What's up everybody, Pokesan here, and welcome to another Top 5 video. If you guys missed the last Top 5 video I did, it was based on what I would like to see in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. However, in this Top 5, we will be discussing what I think to be the best towns and cities in every Pokemon game. Now, you may not agree with my opinion, and that is completely fine, as this whole list is opinionated, formed by my own opinion, and I do not mean to push this as fact or as superficial, but it is my own opinion. So, hope you guys can keep that in mind, and if you have any disagreements, please feel free to comment down below, uh, and I will be sure to read them. Also, if you have any other top 5 ideas that you would like to see me do, then please list them down there as well, as I would greatly appreciate any and all feedback. But with that said, let's get on with it. Number 5. Snowbell City. Now you may be wondering why I picked Snowbell for number 5. Well, let me tell you why. Alright, I think it's a great setting for the 8th and final gym badge of your X and Y journey. Of your journey through Kalos. And, and another reason why is I think it has the music that nails it home that you really just saved an entire region from being destroyed by an ultimate weapon, those being Xerneas and Eveltal, if you didn't know already. So, it really nails that factor home, and it's a really nice place to end off your journey. The, mu the music makes you feel ultra triumphant that you just that you just saved an entire region, or possibly the entire world, and it just, it just is a nice way of just like, it's the calm after the storm, basically, is what it is. And, I mean, even though it's like, <laughs> it's a snow-filled city. What am I saying? Calm after the storm. And I'm, uh, jeez. But regardless, it really has the feeling, and, uh, like, it's just the feel of the city is really nice as well. Really quaint. You know, really, really homey feeling type, type of city. And it really has, like, it's a similar feel to, like, stuff like Snow Point City, right? It's the same thing, and I just wish that we had more more snow-filled cities more in Pokemon. So, stuff like that would be ma so unique. It, it would set a city so far apart from the others that it would honestly just be a great highlight, and Snowbell City is a great highlight of X and Y. Number 4. Pyrite Town. This is, this is kind of making me laugh thinking about it, but before you say anything, hear me out, okay. Number 4 is Pyrite Town. Now, uh, you may, a lot of you not, may not even know what Pyrite Town is, to be fair, uh, because if you're if you're just keeping up with the main series of Pokemon, you will never know what this is. However, it's a great setting, um, and let me tell you why. All right, I personally think that the the, the Ore games, uh, those being Coliseum and XD Gale of Darkness, are heavily underrated. And if you and if you have a chance to play it, you really should, because those games will present you in a different will present Pokemon in a, in a different light, in in more ways than one from what just the normal like main series presents, because those games are not afraid to delve into like more like more darker topics, and I feel like that is a good way to really express Pokemon as a whole, because you see Pokemon everywhere, and you think happy-go-lucky, right? Happy-go-lucky, like, and nothing bad's ever gonna happen, because the main character's always gonna take care of it. But no, in XD Gale of Darkness, that almost doesn't happen. And so I like the, the darker tone of, this, of those games, because it really kicks it in that they can do that type of thing, but they don't. But anyways, let me get back to why I like Pirate Town. Uh, I like Pirate Town because it, it really, like, nails in the, the, the sort of grittier feeling of those games, right? It really nails in the, the fact that, oh crap, a really junky looking city, right? That's just filled with, like, like that have houses literally built out of scrap metal. And it really feels like, like a grittier setting for a Pokemon game. And the music? The music's very, like, it's very jazzy, I'll tell you that. I will tell you that. Music is very jazzy. It's nice and calm, but also at the same time very upbeat. And that's what I like about it. And, yeah, it really nails setting in the darker tone of, of the game, right? Of those games. And, uh, yeah, that's, that is just exactly why I like it. Number 3. Sutopolis City from Hoenn. Sutopolis City. What is there to say about it? You have to dive under underwater to get into the city in the first place, which is pretty cool already, because that's one thing that Sutopolis City has has over every single other city in the Pokemon franchise. There has never been one other time where you have to literally dive underwater to get to like an like a city like that's very close to the feeling of like Atlantis or something, right? It really nails that feeling of just like, oh, 
This is like a, an underground, like water city. Except no, it's just it's just there's a dome. There's a dome like around it. It's kind of funny how how many people just don't notice that. <laughs> However, it's a, it's a great setting for like the final the final I guess the final climax or just a setting for for the climax of the game where you have to fight Kyogre, Groudon, or Rayquaza. Uh, well, not really fight them, but you like you encounter them and they're doing their thing, and then Rayquaza comes down in the sky if you're playing Emerald. Repla Rayquaza just comes down and just just dispels everything immediately, which kind of threw it off, to be honest, but, like, it was better, it was better done in Ruby and Sapphire, obviously, because you had to fight them in the Cave of Origin, and, and the music is very nice, too, it's like, once, once that whole thing clears up, it's the same thing as Snowbell City, it's just, you feel that you've just dispelled an entire thing from ever, from, from really happening. The music really sets in the tone when, when everything is all said and done, right, because it, it just gives you the feeling, just, Oh crap, I saved the world from 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 overflooding or just being desolately dry. I am not going to lie. It is a very cool theme and it really sets in that that's the last destination for the last gym badge again. And it it really just does wonders for 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 the locales of Hoenn. I mean, yeah, it is a lot of water, but <laughs> I don't know, it has that, that pirate feel to it. I don't know. I don't know how to really describe it. Let me know in the comments down below if you agree with that. Uh, I think that it has like a really sort of piratey feel to it. Like, um, you're out on sea type of feel. That really adds up to the reason why I like Sutopolis as much as I do. Number two, Opelucid City. Unova. I must say, out of all the cities or, or towns in Pokemon, Opelousa City has one thing that is that makes it very distinct, and I see very few people talking about it. I'm, uh, if I if I had to be honest, Opelousa City is so cool in the right that depending on which version of the game you're playing, the the actual city changes its appearance. If you're playing Black, you get a more futuristic look to Opelousa City, as if it were from the future or something. And if you're playing white, you get this sort of very historical feel to it that it just, it looks old, but at the same time, it looks really refreshing, uh, like it was in the past or something. And not only does the appearance change, the music does as well, and that's what I like about it so much. There's two ends of the city that's just, that are just on the opposite sides of time. You get one that is super futuristic, and then one that is super historical and old. But they both work so well together. It's like two sides of the same coin, basically. Could you imagine playing black? You go up to the city, and it's all just futuristic. You got lights everywhere. You got like lights on the street and whatnot. And then you play white, and then you just have all these like stone stone streets or like paved streets. It, it's so cool. The music blends so well, fits the aesthetic so well, and I like it because it's another great setting for a final gym gym badge, or I guess final in, in the originals, but uh, seventh in Black and White 2, of course. The music there fits it so well because in Black, it's very energetic and upbeat, while in White, it's very quaint and relaxing, and it, it really nails in the sort of um, the aesthetic that they're going for there. I really do like Open Lizard City, and I feel like it should be talked about more. Like, I feel like cities and, and towns should be talked about more in Pokemon. They just aren't, which is kind of saddening, but uh, it is what it is. Let me know what you guys think in the comments of Opelousa City. I mean, do you like it? Do you not? Hey, uh, I just think that it's one of those really standout cities that, like, it's not really often talked about because it, it's, I, I think, anyways, uh, I don't know if it is or not, but, um, yeah, no, I just really like Opal as a city for what it is, for what it stands for, and it's just, it, I really wish they would do this uh, concept more often with two ends of time or something, or just something that looks completely different. Like what they did in Sun and Moon with like the ultra wormholes or whatnot, because you got to see a different version of how Oli. When you go into Guzzlord's world, it was a different version of how Oli. Those are the reasons that add up to why I like Opal Lucid City so much. Now, before we get into the number one pick, of this top five, I would like to give out some honorable mentions. These were cities and towns that I had heavily considered, but I just couldn't really put them anywhere. They're just so far up there. I like them all so much. I just did not know where to put them. So for our honorable mentions, we have Balanly from Galar in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Next up, we have Goldenrod City from Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal, and Pokemon Hard Gold and Soul Silver.
And our last honorable mention goes to Sunny Shore City from Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. Number one, Jubilife City from Sinnoh. Well now, Jubilife City, what can I say about it? You all probably saw this coming, but Jubilife City is a great hub. It, ha it lets you access four other cities. North, we have Floroma Town. East, we got Orbrick City. West, we got Candlelife City. And South, we got Sanjum Town. And what else do I need to say about Jubilife City? It has one of the most memorable themes in all of Pokemon. And honestly, it's it's a great way to, like, you're finally able to set off on your journey. And this is the first city after having a Pokedex, your Pokeballs, and your Pokemon, obviously. It's a great hub. It has a trainer school, the whole campaign with the whole Poketch. I think Jubilee City is great because it's a really great start to an amazing journey up ahead. And that's what I really like about it. It's just, it has all the essentials. It has a global links, global trade station. I think Jubilee City is truly great because it's a great sign of things to come in your adventure in Sinnoh. It's a great city to start out in, right? Because you got like four branching paths, oh, albeit you, can, you can't really go to the, to the west all that well, but you got Orbrook City, you got Floroma Town, you got Sandrum Town, it's a great hub. The music is absolutely banging, it is so calm and relaxing, and honestly, I would sleep to that. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. It's a great theme to sleep to, and I, and also, this is biased, but, uh, you know, Platinum being my favorite game, and I've listened to this track on repeat hundreds upon hundreds of times, so... I never get bored of it. At all. <laughs> Alright guys, that about does it for my top 5 best towns and cities in the Pokemon games. If you enjoyed this video, then please make sure to leave a like on this video. Comment down below your thoughts and opinions and what you disagree with, what you agree with. Is there anything that you would like to see me do in the future? Like top 5 content? Like, give me some ideas for top 5 content because I am all up for ideas and I will definitely be willing to take them into consideration. Uh, but with all that said, if you do enjoy the content and would like to see more, please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss a single new upload or a stream that I do, because I do streams uh, every now and then, and I might do like other stuff involving Pokemon games with all that stuff and also uh, Nintendo, because I like Nintendo, and this is a Nintendo-based channel, so if you're in for that, please hit subscribe. With all that said, uh, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace!